This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. We are back with our Canes wear Miami Hurricanes post-game reports. Oh, wait a minute. Jake just threw another interception. <laughs> and Manny caught it. A nice job by you, Manny. Great man. <laughs> hey, I had Holy. to jump in, man. I had to get myself uh, an interception too today, man. Uh, I, I, I heard Michelle Kaufman ask him, hey, can you, uh, can you assess Jake's play? Well, he had some good moments and not so good moments. And he just left. <laughs> yeah, pretty oh, much. I, 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 I got to say, that was scary play because I don't mind interceptions when they're interceptions that somebody, you know, made a really good play, freakish or whatever, but those look like really bad interceptions that you really weren't looking at the defender that was coming because two of those interceptions, like they read it, I mean, right from the get-go, and he did not see the defender. In other words, they were like really – Bad, bad, bad interceptions. And I, I wonder now about reading defenses for that young man, I got to say. Well, I mean, listen, all I know is there were a lot of people who said Jake Garcia was the answer, right? You know, oh, yeah. bench, bench Tyler, uh, the coaching, this coaching staff has no idea what they're talking about. They're right. idiots. You got to put in the other guy. He's much better. This is why uh, – this is what happens, right, when, when, you, when you get what you want. And, uh, and so, look, Jake Garcia, he's a talented kid. Uh, but you don't just come into a college uh, game being the number two quarterback all week and all of a sudden come in and know exactly what to do. He'll look better when he's preparing as the starter for the rest of the season because my guess is Tyler is probably out for the rest of the season at this point. But yeah. my, my point is, like, don't just, sit, just, don't just think magic happens, dude. Like, guys don't just come in all of a sudden play play awesome. And, uh, you know, Jake Garcia might have brighter days in his future, but today wasn't one of them. Manny, thanks for joining us, man. Nice and sunny where you're at, but cloudy day for Miami football. And so my thing is, where do you start from here? Because it seems like some of the things that were fixed, and I say that with not so much confidence, but for example, last week, Miami didn't have a turnover issue, right? This week they did. Last week it was the penalties. This week, three for 30 on penalties. So it's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Where do you, and then the tackling issues reared its ugly head again in the second half, I must say. And it just seemed like everything fell apart at the same time. Missed tackles, interceptions by Jake, pass, pass pro issues. And, you know, I, I just don't know where to start with this staff. And to me, I'm a players play, coaches coach guy. They're making this staff look terrible. And I know this staff didn't forget how to coach from last year this year. So, I mean, where do you start? Yeah, I feel like what we're watching is that cartoon, you know, where where uh, the boat is sinking and the cartoon character keeps sticking his finger in one hole and then another hole opens up and the water just keeps coming through. Like, that's what's happening to Mario here. And again, you know, I, I left this game feeling the same way I did after Middle Tennessee State in the sense of there's something rotten at the core in that locker room. I, you guys listen to the press conference. I asked I Mario, I, I asked agree. Mario point blank, did guys quit? You know, and obviously that to me is the biggest, biggest reason why you have issues like this. The reason why you can't trust this team. They, when you're that mentally weak, when you're that mentally soft, you don't overcome things you don't, easily. This team is such an emotional wreck. And I think that third quarter was the perfect uh, recipe for, for what, how mentally soft they really are. I mean, Mike, you, you get a turnover. You, you take the lead after you're down 17 to 7. You have all the momentum within two minutes. And what happens? You stop playing hard the way you're supposed to keep playing. You give up that 18 play drive and you just fall apart. And it just and you see it piece by piece how easily this thing falls apart, which to me tells me two things. One, you're de you're definitely good enough to beat Duke. It's not a talent issue, right? You have guys that can make plays. You're just not mentally strong. You're mentally weak where you run into trouble and it's and it's tough for you to get out of it. And and so to me, everything, whether it's penalties, whether it's turnovers, whether it's lack of blocking and protection, whether it's ta whatever, tackling, anything that you bring up, it's a mindset. And for whatever reason, these guys just don't have what it takes to win. And by the way, this isn't a surprise. We've seen this for how many years now? This isn't brand new. Mario didn't introduce this to this team. They were 2-4 and four last year to start the season, right? I mean, there was a reason they lost some of the games that they lost last year. It's the same thing that's eating these guys up here. Um, 
So, yes, they played hard for Manny Diaz for the last six games of last season and finished five and one. That's Miami peak under under Manny Diaz. I want to see Miami peak under Mario Cristobal when he's got his guys here. Yeah, and, and let me tell you something. Here's I'm a Mario guy. I'm rooting for Mario. I understand he doesn't have the right characters in that locker room. There's a reason why he keeps talking about mental toughness and fighting through all of this because I feel he knows that in that locker room he's probably had to talk a lot about that because there isn't a lot of mental fortitude. But here's something I can defend Mario in. Dude, why do you keep playing the rooster? What? Why aren't you playing Henry Parrish? Why aren't you playing somebody else? Why do you keep playing people that are unreliable? That's the part I don't find acceptable as a coach. You know, you, you, you tell me, you know, before the season started, you guys didn't have access for a couple of weeks. Everybody talked about the rooster. Oh, no, no, we've worked on it. We're better off. No, nope, that didn't work out. Today, you, he said, no, we've been practicing better. D no, bro, don't tell me that. Then you're not assessing things the right way. It, it, either you're lying and just giving, you know, blowing smoke up our asses. But when I see you play the rooster over Henry Parrish, I got to question your coaching decision there on that one. I agree. Oh, I mean, you can't defend some of these decisions. I think what's going to happen here over these last five games and what I'm hoping happens is that some of these guys just get run off. The guys that shouldn't be playing on this team and shouldn't be getting those opportunities um, and, and that you start going with guys who want to be out there, that want to play for you and want to, and want to perform and can perform at the level you want them to. Um, you know, but you're right. You can't defend it. Uh, you know, they accused Manny of the same thing last year, right? Bubba Bolden, why is he out there? He's, got, he's playing with half of a shoulder or whatever it was you know, when he was hurt last year, but yet they kept they kept trotting them out there. At some point here, Mario's going to have to stand up and just make some hard decisions, bench some guys. And you know what? Oh, my feeling is this. If you got to sacrifice a season, I'd rather sacrifice year one than year three than year four. Do it now. You know, make make the cuts, the incisions now. There's nothing to play for. You're not winning the course. Well, this no, year. no. And let me help you on this. That helps you build your foundation for next year. So if you start playing all of these young, if most of the young guys that they that they brought over are the ones making the impact. So play them all, bro. Get them all playing time this year. So that way next year you're not breaking some newbies in. You've got some guys. They've got some playing time. They've got some experience. That'll get you better prepared for next year. I'm completely with you on that. Yeah, I think it's time to start, you know, making those kind of changes. And maybe that helps this team get to 500 and get to a bowl game. But at this point, I'm not too confident, though. That fourth quarter was about as ugly a quarter as I've ever seen Miami Hurricanes football. Hey, Amen. Uh, did the coaches mention anything, or Mario or anybody, tweet-wise, because I didn't see it, about injuries? Jonathan, Jonathan Dennis looked to be going down, not didn't look good, and that's a worry for next week because if Ja'Kai Clark isn't 100%, I mean, he played, but he was the emergency center, obviously. I'm not even going to ask you about TVD, and I can't remember who the right guard was to start today. Yeah, it's Lawrence Seymour, who's Seymour. a local kid, second year um, freshman or whatever, um, first start of his career. Yeah. Look, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel here, right? You're, you're playing what you have available to you in terms of guys that you think you can trust as far as blocking and protecting the quarterback. Uh, look, kudos to Duke and Mike Elko. They brought all kinds of blitz packages, delayed blitzes. Uh, they brought guys from different angles, and they did things that Miami wasn't ready for. And uh, – Kudos to that coaching staff for getting the job done. But, look, the reality is, man, like the injuries and all that. James Williams, I don't think, finished the game. I don't know. He was. I didn't see him on the sideline at the end of the game. So that's a, that's a big-time injury potentially for Miami. You mentioned Tyler Van Dyke. Uh, I think Je Dennis is probably done for the year. He had a big brace on his leg. He's standing on, you know, on, on crutches. So um, my guess is Miami came out of this game with some injuries. But, again, uh, at this point, you're three and four. What are you really playing for? Start playing some of the younger guys and build towards the future. Let me ask you this, Manny. Is it a fate? And look, my expectations were at minimum to uh, compete, maybe not win, but at least compete for the Coastal, have a chance to play maybe for Charlotte, in Charlotte. But is it a failure of a season to not even make a bowl? Yeah, no question. I mean, with, with the team that you have, you should at least be bowl eligible. You should be uh, relatively the same record as you were last year, which was 7-5. and five. Um but, you know, look, I was telling somebody else this as we were coming down the elevator today. What's the difference between five and seven and seven and five these days? You know, it's a couple turnovers here. It's a touchdown there instead of a field goal. I mean, today Miami was in control of this game for the first two minutes of the third quarter. 
if they stop, if they get one stop on Duke on that long touchdown drive, does it spiral into what this was? Probably not. So, it, again, it's a handful of plays that separate being five and seven or seven and five or eight and four or whatever. Like, there's just a couple of plays. So, to me, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Miami's not making a bowl this year because they can. Um, but, you know, I think if they can just get, get, get bowl eligible, you salvage that, you get some extra practices with some of these kids, you know, that, that's really what the value is in the yeah. season. I'm with you there, Manny. Um, when you when you start looking at uh, Jake Garcia, does he automatically start next week, or is uh, is there somebody else in the mix? Is the is the is the leash a little short with Jake Garcia? How do you handle that? I think you have to obviously prepare your Curry Brown now to really to really do more than just come in for a couple of plays, right? I mean, you, you got to prepare him uh, to be ready to start in the event something happens to Jake. Jake took a lot of hits today as well. You know, he was. He was getting popped back there himself, so we'll have to see how he feels during the week and what coaches say about that. But, uh, look, anything goes at this point, all right? Uh, survive as much as you can, get the, get the best players on the field that you can, and just try to win as much as you can. And uh, if Jake isn't that guy for you, then you go to then you go to Ja'Kari Brown and you play the freshman. Look, Miami's got a lot of recruits in this next class that they really like, that Mario is handpicking these guys. He's recruited them for over a year now. Um, so, to me... Uh, even if they're just warming the seat up for the next group of transfers, the next couple of recruits, then that's what they're doing. I got nothing else, man. I'm just, I'm a pissed that, off. I don't blame you, bro. That, that poor guy, <laughs> he's, he's hurting badly, bro. Yeah, I am. Tomorrow's my eating. birthday. You know, it just, it just sucks. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Tua will give you a win. Don't worry about it. You can count on Tua. Don't worry about it. He'll give you a win tomorrow. You'll be, oh, I, I forgot you're a Niners fan. That's what it is. You're you're waiting for Christian McCaffrey. Well, you got McCaffrey, bro. What are you talking about? You no, no, McCaffrey. he's waiting. No, he's waiting for Christian McCaffrey's next injury. Is what he's doing as a Niners fan. Well, what do you got, Sean? Manny, um, how close did you think uh, Duke was to putting the fifty burger on uh, the Canes oh. today? Oh, oh, they they could have. They uh they showed restraint. They were kind of like uh, that medieval back in the day. That soldier who had the. Uh, the sword in his hand he could have chopped the guy's head off if he wanted to they could have they could have easily done that they decided to put the sword down well there you go all right what are you working on in the athletics so folks can check you out my brother hey uh i'll be i'll be writing about the canes this week oh i can't promise you the athletic may redirect me now man and say hey we need you to go some other place where uh where, where the football is a little better so we'll see oh, wait a minute. Uh, are, you, are you telling me that in the gridiron round table on tuesday you'll be the ucf representative I, now I, I may be i may have to start covering the team up in orlando that's uh that's what's gonna pay the bills <laughs> the walk-ons folks will be happy they've got uh, two locations in kissing me in orlando there you go bro there you go there you it's go a, brother. It's, a, it's a beautiful thing all right follow him on twitter at manny underscore navarro and of course you can catch him multiple times a week here on the platform reporting for the canes and make sure you subscribe to the athletic so you can always stay on top of everything going on with the Canes. Manny, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Thanks, All right, man. guys. Take care, man. Don't forget, Canes wear. You order over $100, baby, you will get free shipping. Yes, over $99, you get free shipping. Go to caneswear.com. They got everything and anything with Canes logo on it. Brian.